Hi, I'm Heidi, and I'm going to show you how to distress a costume. This is part of a tutorial series that I'm doing on Rey from Star Wars, but you can use these techniques on pretty much any costume that needs to look dirty, old, or worn in. Taking the time to do this to your costume can make the difference between something that looks like an authentic part of the universe that it was inspired by, versus something that looks like you got it at Party City. You might be wondering why you need a tutorial to make something look dirty when you can just walk outside and throw it on the ground. Using real dirt is definitely an option, but you might not have immediate access to the exact type of dirt that you need for that particular costume. So we're gonna look at some options that are more sanitary and that you'll have better control over for more predictable and consistent results. So I've assembled some of my favorite weapons of choice, uh, which include everything from household objects to some um, professional tools that are used in the film industry. We'll start with the basics and then work our way up to some of the fancier stuff and compare some of those items to other options that are cheaper or more widely available. One of the easiest ways to start aging fabric is to just wash it and dry it over and over again. This process breaks down the fibers of the material and makes everything softer and it makes it look like it's been used way more times than it actually has. If you're planning to do this, you should do this before you do anything else so that you don't end up washing out any dyes or other pigments that you put onto the fabric to discolor it. This is an example of some fabric that's been washed multiple times. I also used a lot of fabric softener on this to make it very, uh, very worn in feeling. And I washed this with a load of dark clothes so that some of the dyes that were loose on those dark items um, ended up getting absorbed by this piece which is what happens anytime you accidentally put something white in with your dark clothes, it looks really dingy when it comes out. So you can do that deliberately to make something look like it's a dirtier or older. Dye is another great tool for aging fabric. Uh, with the right colors, you can make something look dingy or dirty, or you can make fake stains on things. Commercial dyes are a great option. You can get RIT dyes at basically any grocery store, as well as dye remover that can help you remove color from clothing that might be too dark. In my previous video, I went into detail on how you can use coffee or tea to dye fabric. So check out that video if you want more information on that. A couple other things you can do with coffee includes using instant coffee. You can prepare that with some hot water in a cup and then paint it onto your fabric with a sponge brush. Uh, you can also put it into a spray bottle and then spray it over your fabric or your clothing to uh, cover a larger area at a time. Keep in mind that unless you're using hot coffee and giving the fabric a lot of time to soak it up and absorb it, the color change will most likely not be permanent, but you can allow that coffee to dry in the fabric which will discolor it. Another one of the most popular techniques for distressing fabric is to use sandpaper to break down the fibers and to roughen up the surface. Be strategic about the areas where you're applying the sandpaper. Uh, you want to focus on areas that would naturally receive the most wear, such as the seat of the pants or right below the knee. The seams and the edges are also really good areas to sand, especially if you want to do frayed edges. Next I did some tests with a bunch of the different products to see which would work best for distressing ray. When you approach distressing your clothes, you want to build up subtle layers using multiple colors and multiple products. If you take any one of these products and spray it all over everything, then your distressing is going to look really deliberate and one-dimensional. Instead of doing that, build up layers using multiple products and colors and that will help you get results that are a lot more convincing and natural looking. So here are a couple of our first distressing products in action. These are a variety of sprays that have different colored pigments in them that we will check out one by one. Starting with this one. This is the Movie Paint Dirt Spray. I got this from a uh, wardrobe supply company. This dirt spray was a lot more subtle than I expected, but it is a really great product for adding just a little bit of dinginess to just about anything. So I use this pretty consistently across most of the pieces, but because it's so light, it didn't overpower the whole costume or make everything look too consistent. The next product that I tested out is this Streaks and Tips Temporary Hair Color Spray. This is a really high quality hair color spray that actually goes on very beautifully. The color that I chose for this was Golden Blonde, which unfortunately ended up having actual gold glitter in it, which is beautiful, but not really what I want for distressing this costume. I would love to try it in another color and maybe see if that would be more appropriate for this application. I tested out another hair color spray in this dark brown color. This is by Graftovian. These are really great hair color sprays as well. 
This one is a little bit heavy for distressing, but it would definitely be useful in some applications. The last spray that I tested out is also a hair product. This is a dry shampoo that comes pigmented for dark brown hair. This ended up being my favorite product out of all of the sprays that I tried. It was the easiest to blend and build up color, and so I think that this is going to be my winner and my go-to for distressing in the future. So this lovely set of skid marks was made using what looks like the grossest deodorant you'll ever buy. This is by Schmier. All you have to do is wipe this across your fabric to draw on anywhere that you want this extra dirt. This one is called Burnt Umber and it comes in a lot of different colors. This is really easy to apply. You can rub it onto the fabric, work it in, and blend it out really nicely. The pigment is pretty intense though, so you want to make sure that you're applying it sparingly and only in very specific places, such as the bottoms of the shoes or the bottoms of the cuffs of the pants. The next product that I got to try out is called Fuller's Earth, which is a really awesome fine powder that you can use as a cosmetic or to put directly on clothing. One of the easiest ways to use this is by making a pounce bag. So this is made from a scrap of muslin cloth. I took a couple spoonfuls of this Fuller's Earth and just placed it in the center. I drew it up, uh, tied it off with a rubber band, and it created this little pounce bag that I can use to apply dirt across fabric or to whatever other accessories that I'm wearing. This was one of my favorite products out of everything that I tried out. Uh, I really love the way that it goes on. It's super easy to use and it's totally appropriate because it looks like sand um, on Ray's home planet, Jakku. So I used it pretty much all over her boots and the rest of the costume. The last couple products that I tried out are all makeup items. So this first one is called Texas Dirt. This is by Mayron. It can be applied directly to the skin or to fabric as well. It blends out really nicely and it has this like dark reddish muddy color that is really similar to Texas Dirt to be honest. This product is really great but I don't think that this color is really right for Ray so I didn't end up using it on this costume. The next couple items are just products that I pulled out of my makeup drawer starting with this Bare Minerals Warmth Powder. Um, I found that this one didn't blend very well across the fabric and it tended to look splotchy as I applied it. This might be a great product if that's your desired effect, but I ended up not really using this one either. And finally, I decided to try out just a really cheap bronzer. This one's called Oliver Glow and it is by Ruby Kisses and according to the sticker that's still on it, I paid $3.99 for it. So this is definitely uh, the cheapest option. It went on really well, but the color is a little bit too light and peachy, I think, for this particular costume. However, I'd love to try this out in a couple other colors, just to see how that works. To distress Ray's leather items, like her cuff and her belt, I looked for ways to discolor the leather and then to scratch the surface. First of all, I started out with Q-tips and some alcohol, and I applied the alcohol with the Q-tip to a lot of the raised areas and the edges of this leather cuff. I was able to lighten the dye pretty much anywhere where that leather is most exposed. This mimics the way that it would fade over many years of wear. I went back over those areas with some sandpaper to roughen it a little bit. You want to be very, very careful when you're doing this because any surface that you take off the leather can't be replaced. It is a really fantastic way to add texture to your leather items and make it look a lot older than it really is. These are just a few of the ways that you can distress your fabric, but the options are endless. So hopefully this will be enough to get you started. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe if you want to see some more cosplay tutorials. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the rest of my Ray cosplay videos. Thanks, see you next time. Check out my next tutorial on how to make a custom sized wig head.